With One UI 8.5 now official via the beta, it's time to go through and check everything over to show you what's new. Your complete guide to One UI 8.5. Welcome back to Sam Mobile TV. You're here with Daniel. And we have pretty much had One UI 8.5 for a couple of months now. So we kind of have gone through what the early builds looked like, but now we have 8.5 in its entirety via the beta. It's time to dive deep into it and see what the official update looks like. So we've got a few categories we're gonna go over, jump into the headline stuff, the design refresh, look at some features as well, and just sort of show you everything that we've found and kind of know about 8.5 so far. The big one, the headline is the quick panel. Samsung have completely allowed customization for the quick panel with 8.5 compared to what it was like with One UI 8. Again, we've done a comparison to One UI 8 and 8.5 already. So we've done that side by side, but let's show you just 8.5 isolated on its own. As you can see, I have updated my own quick panel and personalized it to the way I'd like it to be. I've got the vertical sort of brightness and volume sliders. I've isolated the toggles for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to be smaller. Same with flight mode and torch. I've moved things around and it's very easy to do. Hit the edit icon and you can see everything pop up there. What I really like is the fact you can actually resize things. So the smart view toggle can be bigger or smaller. And then if there's things that I don't use, I can just delete them. Like always on display, I'm just gonna leave that on. So I can just remove that toggle and then expand quick share out to be bigger. So I can do that. If the music panel, I want it to be bigger, I can drag it to be bigger or smaller, depending on sort of what I'd like it to be. And the good thing is the music panel only is that big when it's being used. When it's not being used, it's not gonna be that big, but I'll just leave it to that, that's enough. And then for example, decks, I might want decks to be a little bit bigger. So I can turn off this one, maybe make a hotspot. Let's move things around here. Let's move decks over here and then slide decks out. Beautiful. And then that can stay like that. And then that's my new quick panel there. And I still have access to expand extra toggles here. And I also still have access to add in extra stuff that I want. So whether I want maybe song search to be in there, whether I want to add things like the finder, you can add that in there. And then there's just a whole long list of things that I might want to add in to my quick panel should I want to, because now it is just that customizable. I'd really like to see more third-party stuff the more this beta progresses and the more developers sort of get on board with it, because that way, imagine being able to just jump straight in to third-party toggles as well. And I think that's probably where this sort of has some legs in it. I can put wireless power share and there you go. You've got yourself a nice customizable scrolling quick panel. Love it. The next aspect of One UI 8.5 is the app refresh. So Samsung have gone through and updated the design on a bunch of different system apps or like the Samsung first party apps. The gallery is the most obvious one. You're gonna see a lot of this sort of pill shaped floating menus over the top and overlaid over the sort of albums and pictures. So if I click on this picture here and I sort of make it bigger, you'll see the pill-shaped icon and the menus kind of sit atop of the uh, existing photo. Whereas before it would sort of just be a menu that would sit at the bottom. They've kind of lifted everything above everything else and given it that, I guess you could say, 3D depth effect. And that's everywhere through different apps as well. It's not just the gallery. I could go into Samsung Notes, which has got that same update as well. And you can see that there's that same sort of floating sort of menu and iconography for there too. It's not just there, Samsung internet's got it too. You can see the pill shaped stuff there and you can see they've kind of added some extra things like now that they've got the PC internet beta, you can see that it can sync the tabs across multiple devices as well. So you can access different devices, internet tabs, and then the floating icons and menus are there too. As well as with Samsung internet, they've given us multiple options to how we view the tabs. So it can be a stack or a grid, which again, changes how you can sort of look and view your open tabs currently. Phone dial is the same. You've got the three sort of floating menu with the icons and the names there. Some ones that have been updated more recently with the beta is things like the voice recorder. 
So the voice recorder also now has this exact same sort of look and feel about it. So Samsung have gone ahead and updated a lot of these to sort of be that visual One UI 8.5 refresh. Other ones that match that is things like the clock. That's now got this really nice sort of menu and everything's, oh, I really like that Samsung haven't just stood still with One UI. Since updating to 7, they haven't just said, you know what, that's, a, that's enough for visual redesign. They've pushed ahead and changed things again and are a big fan of this direction. To go along with that, they've updated the settings. So if you go into the settings menu here, the settings menu also has got this same visual redesign. You've got the search icon that has been moved from an icon into a floating bar, again, above everything else. And it kind of just reappears after you stop scrolling, sort of stay out of the way. And then the settings itself has removed all of the examples of what is in the settings. So things that used to say, oh, this is what sits in this menu has been removed. To kind of create this cleaner, more visual aesthetic where you're not actually seeing everything. But inside the settings too, they've changed things like the battery menu has got a redesign as well as the device care menu that's also been redesigned. Again, everything's been redesigned to be more visual in terms of being able to see more information but without being more cluttered. And depending on how you like to see things, this could be better because you see more things. Perfect example is jumping back to the apps is my files. Everything has kind of been shrunk into categories and the, the overwhelming visuals have been removed in favor of more subtle ones that allows you to see more, but then have it be more categorized and easier to find things. That's when you're 8.5, pretty much in a nutshell. Then Samsung has gone ahead and changed Samsung DeX. They've finally started to put attention into the DeX feature set, I guess you could call it. If you go into Samsung DeX here, this, this is already visually different. Uh, this visual menu here has actually has a visual, whereas the one you ate one, they just removed it and it was so plain. And then you've got some extra toggles here now, like command plus arrows to move windows, something that was missing from the last version of DeX with one UI. So they've added that back in. Also with Samsung DeX with one UI 8.5 is they've brought in the desktop, the multiple desktops that they've done with the tablet. So you've got desktop one, desktop two, desktop three, desktop four. And they've kind of allowed you to now have multiple desktops and you can interact with different environments because of these desktops, which means you can actually launch different apps in different ones. And it means you can create different environments, one for productivity, one for entertainment and other ones as well, should you want to. And it's just given Dex that different sort of feel. Something else that's been added to One UI 8.5 with Samsung Dex is screen recording inside Samsung Dex too, where you can now actually screen record what you're doing on, on the display which is great if you're working in an industry where you do training because you can create demonstration videos inside the Samsung DeX environment and then load them into a presentation. It's awesome. Then we're going to dive into the camera. Now, the camera hasn't got drastic changes to it. There's two ones that I noticed straight away and they're both to do with Pro Mode. You've got Pro Mode Photos, which now has this clean preview toggle, which removes all the distractions from the screen. And by distractions, I don't mean the grid lines because that's essential if you've turned that on to getting your rule of thirds and framing your photo right. But things like the ISO and your information that you control, that all gets removed and it gives you a clean preview. And that's also in pro video mode. If we jump over to here, that same clean preview toggle exists there too. So Samsung uh, sort of, I guess, putting some emphasis on content creation and there was something in here where it had 8K 25 frames per second video in a very early build. It doesn't seem to be here now though. So curious to see whether that makes it to the S26, but for the time being here, it's not there. Then inside the camera settings, you've got a reorganization of how it sort of looks. They've just recategorized things and put things into different places. Like for example, photo enhancer, this is where scene optimizer and your maximum, medium, and minimum quality to sort of prioritize the different speeds and focusing and stuff like that. That is now just called prioritize quality, balanced, and prioritize speed. They've just made it easier to understand. And then things like the videos have just kind of recategorized everything, as I said. But they've added in extra features like save to external storage, which this was just in Camera Assistant before. So if you jumped into Camera Assistant, that is where that lived but they've now taken it out of Camera Assistant 
well, it's still here in Camera Assistant, but it will be brought out of Camera Assistant into 8.5 properly, and it probably won't live in there anymore. But for me, the big camera change that I'm so confused about is in the More tab, and it's the fact that there is absolutely no single take and no dual recording. What are they doing here? I don't understand how they can just remove two of the best differentiators for Samsung's camera and just have it disappeared. I'm so bothered by that and I will make a full video sort of talking and ranting about that because I just, I don't get it. I use single take all the time and I've got albums full of single take photos and for that not to be a camera mode anymore, oof, subscribe. But any other camera changes that we were expecting, like maybe 24 megapixel mode for the main camera, not there yet. So maybe that's coming in a future update, especially probably once S26 drops, but as of now in the beta, it's not there. And then we dive into Galaxy AI. Now in, on the surface, Galaxy AI actually looks the same. There was a build not too long ago that had some new AI features in it called Now Nudge. It's at the moment just buried deep in the settings and you can't actually get to it at all. So I'm assuming that's going to come later with S26 as well. But what I did notice with Galaxy AI and 8.5 is just some subtle changes to things like photo assist. So they've kind of redesigned how the AI eraser and the move and the create and the style work. So if I go into gallery here and let's say I find this photo here and we want to remove stuff. All right. So I hit the Galaxy AI button. You can see the actual menu is new and there's some new animations to go along with it. So AI eraser, very simple. You just select things and rather than that extra step of needing to press it, it automatically will just remove it. And then you hit erase and then it's just going to erase it. But then what happens is after this, after this eraser, is you actually have the option to continue editing and then go back to previous versions of the edit. So rather than just saving the copy, that's done a stunning job too, by the way. I can hit keep editing. And then this at the top here means I will be able to go back to a previous version and then start from there or just continue editing. Like maybe I want to draw something in there and this is a perfect opportunity to get the S Pen out. Let's say I want to draw a football goal in here. Hopefully it recognizes that as a football goal, but let's put that in there. There's just now different menu options and I can continue to edit as opposed to needing to start all from scratch and go from the beginning. This just gives me the option to continue and pick up where I was working from. Yeah, it's added it in. How good is that? And you can see and generate another edit too from what I've made. Nice. I can save that. Got it. Other Galaxy AI functions have sort of remained the same. The Now Brief has got some extra toggles in it where uh, you can actually toggle on the Audio Brief should you want to. So... That audio brief that lives in the top corner here, I can toggle that off and then it won't be there anymore. And then in terms of content to include, nothing's really changed. That nano banana one has sort of made its way into One UI 8 now. So that's existing already. Everything else is kind of existing. I think it'll just kind of depend on how Samsung push updates to the now brief, uh, whether it's just going to be a standard, you know, this is what you get from it or whether they actually push customized contextual stuff at different points throughout the day. But the most part we're looking forward to is some of the new features as well. Samsung touted a few things in their press release. Some things we showed off, things like the audio broadcast, where you can actually jump into here, find it, audio broadcast, and then you can actually broadcast from here to another device. So anything, maybe your media that's playing on here or your voice, you can just start broadcasting and other people can then pick up with a Bluetooth device that supports AuraCast. So they can hook into this and start listening to it. So for people to listen, they need an audio device that supports Bluetooth low energy audio, such as a speaker or headphones, and that will then hook into the AuraCast broadcast. You can also listen um, to something else as well, in the, like any nearby audio streams, that's an option as well. We've also got storage share, which again, we kind of spoke a little bit about. You can go into nearby devices, go into continue. Let's say if I dragged up my tab, let's do my S25 Edge because it's close by here. If I hit storage share over here, I can hit allow. And then now I can open the storage on my S25 Edge on my S25 Ultra. 
so I can browse the storage from this phone over here. And Storage Share works on a multitude of devices. I am going to do a full breakdown on how Storage Share works uh, as its own feature. I'll stop that broadcast. There's also some content creation stuff from a feature set that Samsung are enabling. Uh, and the big one for me is the customization to log video. So if I, this is a log video I recorded earlier this year. Hit the edit icon. You'll see now I can erase log video with Audio Eraser, which I couldn't do before. But now I have the option to color correct with a LUT. It's very basic at this stage. The only LUT you've got is off or the standard one that they give you, but it also now allows you to control and customize and color correct yourself on device. So hopefully the goal will be that you can load in your own LUT into this because at the moment it can't. So I just need Samsung to please add that in because being able to add in your own custom LUTs to log video, being able to do that on the device makes DeX a very good proposition as well. And the last feature that I've kind of noticed is the update to screen recording. So if I hit screen recording here, you now can so screen record partial of the screen. So rather than the whole entire display, I can just choose a portion of the screen to customize. So I can drag it down. And if I just wanted to maybe demonstrate the widget here, I could do that. And then I hit record, skip the countdown, and that widget or that area is the only part that's actually going to get recorded. And anything that's inside that will get recorded as well. And then you hit stop, and then you go into the gallery, go back, and then that is actually saved in that format. And that is what you can see for the screen recording. So this might just seem like a bit of a visual update to One UI 8.5, because really a lot of the stuff is visual changes. Quick panel, gallery, those are the things that have sort of been refreshed. There are within that though, subtle changes to features that we've shown you, things like the log video, the quick panel customization, that's all features. And that's all stuff I'm very excited for it to go into full version. It's not all exciting though, especially with those losses to single take and dual recording. Uh, again, full video coming for both of those. Hit subscribe to Send Mobile TV for future content. Go visit us on our socials and our website, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Yeah.